Hi there, and thanks for tuning in again to this week's edition of your Wheel and Anchor weekly newsletter. Well, there has certainly been a lot of bad news in the media of late as cases begin to rise across Canada and, of course, in parts of Europe. Uh, and it's easy to get caught up in all the bad news, particularly when there's been good news uh, through the last uh, six or eight weeks or so. And, and a lot of us are looking forward to being able to travel next year. And I think it's important that while uh, it's, it's, we are obviously staying abreast of all of the negative things that are happening, there's a lot of positive stuff. And that's really where we want to focus on, um, particularly in the context of making our plans for next year. And, and we can't forget that, of course, you know, vaccines are actually working and uh, as you'll have seen uh, no doubt in different articles the e efficacy rate of, of the of the Pfizer and the AstraZeneca and, and all of the vaccines that have de been developed is at least as good as or better than when these were initially rolled out at the end of last year and I, I think that that is a very important point it means that they're actually working and if you look at the countries that uh, have been more successful at rolling out the vaccine I, I think of uh, Israel in particular um, it's showing that it actually is helping to contain the virus um, and minimize the, the, all the negative effects that arise out of it. So, so we mustn't forget that. And at the same time, um, they've also uh, been able to do tests recently of people who have either contracted the virus or received the vaccines. And it's showing that the long-term immune response uh, to it seems to be holding. And that's a great sign because it means that um, there is a path to, to longer-term immunity. And, and really, that's the key for us to um, getting back to a normal life. Um, we also can't forget that, that um, all of the effort and research that has been poured into the vaccine development, and they've spent some $14 billion uh, over the last uh, 10 months uh, on developing these vaccines, has tremendous number of side benefits uh, in the fight against uh, other diseases around the world, which we've forgotten about, like malaria, for example, and the technologies that have been have been developed will mean that um, they're able to make great strides forward on some of these things that were thought of as either incurable or or there really wasn't a, a path that, that could clearly be seen. So there's a lot of benefit in that. And the time that we've been at home and, and uh, you know, been uh, sort of stuck it has allowed us time to to reflect, to to relax, maybe more relaxation than than, than many of us are used to. Um, but it's also helped us to depreciate uh, to uh, to appreciate um, our friends and family and all those things that are important to us in our life. That you know, when you're deprived of something for a long enough time, um, you crave it and you value it even more. And I think that that's one of the benefits as well. So um, so there is good news at the end of the tunnel. Um, we just need to hang in there for a bit longer. And I, I'm encouraged that. Um, Although it's been a slow start in Canada, it seems like um, many more vaccines are on the way. Uh, and I think that um, as we get towards summer and as we get through the summer, uh, I think that there's a lot more good news on the horizon. And I'm, I feel positive that we're going to be traveling again. And, and here where I'm based in Thailand, of course, uh, the country has some positive announcements as well. They're going to be opening Phuket, um, one of the, 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 the biggest tourism destination in the country, um, to tourists starting uh, the 1st of July, obviously with some um, uh, prerequisites uh, and the rest of the country by, by the fall. So um, that that is very encouraging, particularly if you've um, uh, looked to uh, and booked to join us on our Koh Samui Live Away next year. On that note, uh, just reflecting over the last couple of days, we had our Azores, uh, our Porto and the Azores webinar for our program that has been postponed three times already, but we are going to be going next uh, April, at the, or sorry, at the end of uh, March uh, and April next year. Uh, and uh, although we had some technical glitches in the webinar itself, these things happen, um, but we're going to be releasing a recording of uh, last year's webinar where I had two of our guests, our guides from both Porto and the Azores, uh, and I'll be releasing that out to, to those of you who are interested uh, and who were not able to attend the webinar this past Thursday. Coming up this week on Thursday, we also have uh, a webinar on our Gardens of England and France tour. That's where we're going to be going to check out the Chelsea Garden Show. It's probably the, the most prestigious and sought after gardens show in the world that happens every year in May. So we're going to be going there next year uh, with a good friend of mine and uh, our host, Todd Kjargaard, uh, who is one of Toronto's preeminent uh, floral designers. So uh, look forward to that one. Uh, as I say, that's this Thursday, April the 8th at 11 o'clock. And one week after that, on April the 15th, 
uh, at our usual time, 11 a.m., we'll be re-releasing our Sicily and Malta program. And this is a um, small yacht trip uh, where we go out of Naples, Italy, uh, through the Aeolian Islands. That's a wonderful uh, archipelago of volcanic islands uh, in the Adriatic, sorry, in the Mediterranean Sea um, on our way to Sicily, um, visiting some wonderful towns there and before finishing up with uh, five days in the island of Malta. So that's uh, that webinar is coming up on the 15th of April. Please do join us for that. Uh, and uh, I look forward to catching up with you again next week um, with more updates uh, and more exciting stuff. So in the meantime, take care of yourselves, be well, and uh, we'll look forward to catching up again soon.